Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith, University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, and this is just a continuation of um, my video series on climate, abrupt climate change 2016. I'll just uh, dim the lights. So I discussed these methane plumes in the Arctic and how in the space of a few years on the Eastern Siberian Arctic shelf, the measurement, measurements or observations of methane based on a simple area ratio showed a rise of 2,500 times in the space of just a few years. So let's measure the methane at different parts of the Arctic over time. So if we measure it in Barrow, Alaska, you're seeing large spikes uh, approaching 2,400 uh, parts per billion methane. If you go to the other side of the Arctic to Svalbard, we're seeing rises of methane up to almost 2,000 parts per billion here. This data go, is current, goes up to the present day. Some of the sources are, of methane are the permafrost and the ocean floor sediments. So deep in the, under the sediments, we have methane stores, which could be in clathrate. So this is a crystal lattice of water surrounding methane. If you melt that water or lower the pressure, then the water ice lattice, crystal lattice melts, releasing the methane. You get an expansion of about 160 times volume. There's high pressure methane then underneath. Now, the permafrost above, if this is a continuous layer, you can get the methane pockets underneath. But this is being perforated due to warming temperatures on both sides. You've got the geothermal heat below, you've got the seawater warming up above up to five to seven degrees Celsius warmer, according to Peter Wadhams. Have a little, check out his book, A Farewell to Ice. So the water is warming, the permafrost is getting perforated, the methane can come up from the clathrate, or the methane, the organic material in the seafloor can start decomposing in the absence of oxygen, and that's producing methane. The methane then will then go up through the water column into the atmosphere. Now, if the water column depth is shallow, say 50 meters or so, most of the methane will go right up through the water column. If the water column is much deeper, then the methane can be dissolved through the water column, but that's if it's coming out in a steady amount. If it comes out as a burst or a pocket or a bubble, it will completely saturate the water column with methane and then the rest of it, the initial methane, and then the rest of it will go right up into the atmosphere. So basically the, the whole Arctic, the Arctic is becoming a big source of methane and the methane is contributing to these huge temperature anomalies that I showed in a previous uh, video. Okay, not sure what's going on here. Okay, so in terms of the permafrost, this is Canada's, um, this is a map of Canada. So in terms of the permafrost in Canada, we have, this is a continuous permafrost, the dark blue, the lighter blue, the, the, the less dark blue is discontinuous permafrost. We have sporadic permafrost here, isolated patches uh, coming down lower. Uh, and then, um, the outline, the boreal forest is actually shown within the green outline. So the study area I was looking at to, for the environmental assessments is Manitoba here. And you can see that the permafrost is extending down through about half of the province. The northern parts are warming much faster than the southern parts. And uh, the extent of the permafrost isolated patches is down to uh, the top of uh, Lake, Lake Winnipeg, Lake Manitoba. So methane in the Arctic atmosphere. These are measurements um, from one year to the next, from 2006 to 2011. I need to update this uh, with present data, but it's a bit, uh, some of it can be hard to get a hold of. This is from Yurganov, um, but you can clearly see there's vari variation from year to year, but there's years 
you know, where the methane level is coming very strong over the Arctic region. Um, this is in uh, December of each year. Um, so we're getting uh, much larger methane, amounts of methane uh, coming out. And this is showing um, the, uh, you know, a, a week or t a couple, a week and a half or so in January through the years. And you can see the red is uh, methane. It's becoming stronger and stronger. Over five years, it's showing large increases in open water region near the sea ice in the Arctic. So getting now to some of the meteorology and the jet stream behavior, um, I mentioned already in a previous video that as we decrease the temperature difference between the Arctic and the equator by a very strong temperature amplification, say five to eight times in the Arctic, then that lowers that temperature gradient that gradient sets up the jet streams. It's a physical mechanism for why we have jet streams in the first place. So this is a typical compact configuration of the jet stream. We get almost like a circular pattern here. This is when we get a very wavy uh, jet stream. So this was the so-called polar vortex down in Canada across, across North America in 2014. So cold air is coming. So the jet stream waves would be tracking here. So what you can see is you can see very deep troughs here, bringing cold air far south. Very strong ridges, bringing warm air up into those ridges. So this is causing a huge mixing and it leads to an equalization of temperature with latitude in the Arctic, which is what we're seeing. It's a very powerful feedback. So here's a side view of an exceptionally wavy jet stream. So west to east movement, we term zonal. And the jet stream is normally more zonal with, with small ridges and troughs. But as it slows down, it becomes affected more by land ocean contrast. And we get, it gets, can get into stuck positions and gets very, Meridional is a term, lots of north-south movement. So very deep troughs, very high ridges, and just above the troughs is low pressure area, very stormy weather. And just below the ridges is high pressure areas or cyclonic or anti-cyclones, high pressure, uh, very stable air, hot. And this is uh, low pressure areas uh, cyclone, cyclonic activity, stormy. So our world is going to more wavy and convoluted jets, and often these, these uh, strong troughs can just break off and have a closed circular low pressure area coming across. So we're getting um, a lot of more chaos in the climate system and uh, kind of Ran, random perturbations, not like like it's 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 not as as ordered a, a system. So here's an example of the jet stream looping down like this. So low pressure here in the trough, high pressure here in the low pressure, tremendous rainfall. So this is a configuration near Calgary in June 2013. So it had tremendous rainfall on the snow in um, near near Banff in the Rockies. And then that plug of water went right through and into Calgary, flooded downtown Calgary, insured losses exceeded $6 billion just because of this behavior of the jet stream. Uh, this is downtown Calgary. The red areas were, were severely flooded sections of Calgary. And like I say, $6 billion. Um, you may remember in 2003, August of 2003, one of the worst extensive long duration European heat waves. It killed 70,000 people, I think 50,000 in, in France. Um, so if, if you go look at climate reanalyzer and just look at the um, temperature anomalies and cycle back to this period of time, what you can see is this type of configuration. So this is, uh, you know, it looks, I mean, now this is looking very normal, but it, this happened to sit over heavy po heavily populated area that just wasn't prepared. The jet stream, in this case, just find the blue and brown 
uh, intersection and you can trace the jet stream um, pattern. You can trace the jet stream extending far south here, bringing cold air, extending far north here, bringing warm air. Okay, so I, whatever your region is that you want to look at, if you go into Earth Null School, um, you can look at all these different parameters um, at very, uh, and they're updated every three hours in this model. So in this case, um, it's showing surface winds um, on a particular day, um, and where you where the circle is here is the parameters. So 53 kilometer an hour winds in the direction. Um, so you know you can you can look at your particular area and look at the data yourself. This is the same area looking at the at the um, 250 millibar, 250 one millibar is one hexapascal. So you're looking at the height is given in pressure. 250 millibar is the height. That's about 10 kilometers up or so. It's where the jet streams are. So you can see these jet streams and the waviness and so on. So it's another example from Earth Null School. And this is just expanded view. So you can get all the details and so on. So you can see these winds at 250 millibar. Um, and again, get information about any particular region. Now, how is humanity going to be affected most by these disruptions? And it's by our, our food supply. So this is projecting out um, the Palmer Drought Severity Index, PDSI, out about 50 years, showing how large parts of the planet will be drying. So these, all these areas here, these purple and reddish are all drying and then anything green and blue are getting wet. So there's very few areas on land that are getting wetter. Some are, a lot of the high north is. Um, but if you look at our particular region, you know, the Winnipeg uh, Basin region, it's expected to be, um, to undergo drought in the future and even lower as you move across. So if you're building hydroelectric power plants, or you want to see how your country will fare, you need to look at this as, you know, a very important indicator. And also, you know, match this to where crops are grown on the world. And then have a look uh, for yourself to see how global food supply will be affected. So we can't wait anymore. We can't, you know, pro procrastination is, is for, for wusses, right? We have to recognize the problem and uh, grab it by uh, whatever and and uh, start dealing with it. Drivers of serious government action. Bad things must happen to regular people in rich countries right now. The media must report them as being the result of climate change and that we need a change in world view, a public view. So we're looking at ice-free Arctic this decade. Extremely rapid warming, methane surges, mega drought hitting U.S. Southwest, more Katrina-like superstorms, heat waves hitting the U.S. breadbasket, accelerating sea level rise, ice sheet collapse, Amazon rainforest collapse, there go our sinks. That's going to raise food prices. Here's a GMO commodity index. World War I effect rose, World War II effect rose. It's a basket of 33 commodities, inflationary oil shock way up the great paradigm shift here you know oil prices 140 almost 150 dollars a barrel canadian you know big huge problems arab spring churchill you know i love his quotes owing to past neglect in the face of the plaintiff's warnings we have entered upon a period of danger the era of procrastination half measures of soothing and baffling expedients of delays is coming to its close in its place, we are entering a period of consequences. We cannot avoid this period. We are in it now. So let's see how smart um, Donald Trump really is. Okay? Um, you know, let's see if he continues to deny climate change after all of the evidence is presented to him. Um, and uh, if he... If he does try to pull out, if he does pull out of Paris, he's basically saying, uh, you know, giving the world the finger, giving your kids the finger. So we, you know, we, we, we can't, uh, we hope that doesn't happen. Thanks.